Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. AMD's refreshed Ryzen 3000 XT processors are here. And while they may seem fairly underwhelming, AMD said something at their briefing that I couldn't discuss until now. During it, they actually stated that the XT processors are based on an optimized 7 nanometer process. Now, this isn't TSMC's 7 nanometer plus process, but it is apparently better than what AMD is using in their current 3000 series. That means these aren't just heavily bent Ryzen 3000 parts like we thought. They're actually built on a different process. Obviously, that doesn't help the default clocks, but it definitely piqued my interest for overclocking. Well, I was lucky enough that AMD sent them over, and definitely thanks for that. Though, of course, that won't affect my opinion. Anyway, as you'd guess, overclocking was the first thing I did. Now, before I get to the results, the test bench I used included the Red Devil 5700 XT, Trinet Z Royal Memory set to 4 GHz, so I knew I was maxing out the Infinity Fabric, and for cooling, I used the Corsair H100i. The reason I didn't use a custom loop was to try and keep it in line with what most systems will use at best. Oh, and if you want to get anything I discuss in this video, check those affiliate links out in the description below. So with all of that out of the way, how did they do? Well, I have to admit that I was fairly surprised. Starting things off, I kept the voltage of all three processors at 1.3 volts, which is a tiny bit high for these, but I wanted to give them their all. With that, I was able to get the 12-core 3900XT to a stable all-core overclock of 4.4 GHz. That's not bad. According to Silicon Lottery, only 6% of the 3900X processors they tested were able to get to 4.2 GHz on all cores. Early on, those sold for over $840. Now, compare that 4.4 GHz to my 3900X, which was only able to get a stable all-core overclock of 4.15 GHz. Technically, I could get it a bit over that, but it caused issues. That may not sound like a big difference, but 2500 MHz higher across all cores isn't bad. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to really go much higher in single-core overclocks, which has mostly been the case before. You'd think I could at least hit the rate of boost, but that boost really only happens for short bursts. And it's proven here when you compare single core scores between the 3900 XT at 4.4 GHz and a default 3900 XT. The default variant won, though just barely. Oddly enough, the Precision Boost Overdrive did worse than the other two until you look at the all core Cinebench score. All in all, the 3900 XT got about a 6% performance boost over my 3900X. Now, when it comes to the 3600 XT, I was extremely surprised. I expected the 3900 XT to get the highest clocks, but it did not. Either way, the 6-core 12-thread 3600 XT was able to get an all-core overclock of 4.55 GHz. Comparing that to my 3600X, I was able to get a stable all-core overclock of 4.25 GHz, so we're talking a 300 MHz increase. That ultimately gave me around a 7% increase in performance through Cinebench. I was even able to play around with the 3600 XT a bit and got it up to 4.6 GHz, but it started having issues when I ran benchmarks that used a lot of cores. Lastly is the 3800 XT, which is an 8-core, 16-thread CPU, and I was able to get an all-core overclock of 4.5 GHz. Unfortunately, I didn't have a 3800X to compare it to, but as you can see by the score, it performed quite well. Really, I think the higher clocks of the lower CPUs prove that AMD didn't do a ton of bidding to get these chips, or the 3900 XT would have done far better. These are simply built on a new process, which means you may have the potential to win the silicon lottery like anything else. So with all of that said, the question you're probably wondering is whether they're worth a buy. To answer that, I think it comes down to a couple things. First is ultimately what price these will come out at. If the X models are significantly less, say $75 or more, I really wouldn't even consider it. Pretty much no matter what you get, you're looking at around a 6% performance increase. If you plan to use it for your job, that could be worth it. As for gamers, there isn't much of a difference here. The 3900 XT got a decent boost in the bottom 5% of Gears of War Tactics, but there was basically zero difference in World War Z. Ultimately, I wouldn't spend more than $50 over the X model for these, if that. Now, that brings me to the second person. If you're the type who would have been willing to spend $850 on a 4.2 GHz 3900 X, then this is definitely for you. It's a great way to get that extra tiny bit of performance that you simply will not get out of the X model. At the end of the day, AMD's refreshed XT models aren't a big upgrade. They're really just a stopgap while waiting for 4th gen. 
So while that does it for today, are you impressed with AMD's new XC processors or are you holding out for 4th Gen Ryzen? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!